right, gonna do a video here refuting this lying heretic, this hellbound heretic here, Jesse Morrell. He's got so many errors. For example, he believes in eternal. I mean, well, he he rejects eternal security. He believes in conditional security. He uh, believes in sinless perfection. He believes in moral government theology, uh, open theism, all this heretical stuff. Uh, he's got so many errors, and you're gonna see in this video right here. Uh, once saved, always saved. Calvinism refuted. He actually proves that he's self-righteous and that he's working his way to heaven. He openly says, you know, if you are in deliberate sin, you're under God's wrath until you repent. So he proves that salvation is all about what he's doing, not about what Christ did on the cross. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This video right here, he denies the imputed righteousness of Christ. And he says, and in this video, he proves that he's prideful too. Because he says, oh, you think that Christ's righteousness is imputed to you while you're living like a devil? Because he thinks, again, he thinks he's sinlessly perfect. So he thinks that he's basically above, you know, other people who are still sinners. In terms of like, uh, like his status, like I mean, of course he's not saved, so he's still a lost, hellbound sinner himself. But he essentially thinks that he's more. He's like a Pharisee essentially, because the Pharisees, they were a, a sect of the uh, Jews, of the, of the Jews during the time of Jesus. They were a sect, and they actually believe that they are more holy than everyone else. That's exactly what this guy believes. He he goes around saying he's sinlessly perfect. He basically is thinking that he's more holy than everyone else, just like a Pharisee. And just like the Pharisees, he's very prideful and just brags. Like, you know, I've seen videos of him saying, oh, yeah, I'm sinlessly perfect. I'm so holy. I'm a holy, you're righteous person. He's, he's prideful. He's, he's uh, bragging just like a Pharisee would. So, and another thing I want to point out with this whole sinless perfection thing is that sinless perfection and pride go hand in hand. Because someone who's sinlessly perfect will always, like, like they'll, they'll come to the conclusion that they are better than everyone else. Because someone who's sinlessly perfect will always be prideful because they think that they're more holy and they're better and that they're somehow more righteous than everyone else. So they become prideful. Sinless perfection leads to pride every single time. Every single sinless person who thinks he's sinlessly perfect, they always become prideful. Uh, and you're going to see it with this guy right here in, in uh, this video. He thinks he's working his way to heaven. So let's get right into it and refute this uh, hellbound sinner, this heretic right here. They say... Uh well, God looks at me. He doesn't see me. He sees the imputed righteousness of Christ instead. God looks at me and sees perfect righteousness, even though I'm truly wretched. You think God's a dummy? You think God's an idiot? He looks at you and doesn't know what's going on. You, you've just pulled the wool over his eyes. You got this mask on, and he's like, who's that? Oh, that looks like Jesus. See how he's mocking? He's again, you know, the devils that are inside this guy, they're making him mock his biblical doctrine. And again, he's proving that he's prideful because he's saying, oh, you think God's a dummy that you're living, you know, you're living like a devil, but you have Christ's righteousness? So how do you get to heaven? Do you, do you have to be righteous on your, by your own um, power to be, get to heaven? Because that's what he believes. He believes that you have to be sinlessly perfect to merit your salvation. Proving that he's prideful. Let me show you some scripture on that. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21. Here's a good verse. I'd love to see this... Uh, lying Satanists right here trying to refuse. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It's talking about Jesus dying on the cross. Uh, for, he hath made, or for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Watch this. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hmm. So God doesn't, look at, doesn't see Christ's righteousness. Um, verse 21. That we, may be, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hmm. Love to see you review that verse. Um, another good verse is Roman, and there's so many scriptures I could go to. Pretty much the entire book of Romans 4 uh, disproves this, this lying Satanist right here, this uh, hellbound, uh, wicked heretic who, who goes around, basically goes around causing damage to the cause of Christ and just goes around making Christians look like fools through his, his uh, wicked, satanic, just nutty nonsense he does. Uh, where is it? Verse, for Romans chapter 4, verse 20. He staggered out uh, at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21. And being fully persuaded what which he had promised, he was able to perform. Verse 22. Uh, therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Uh, now it was not, verse 23, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. Verse 24. Uh, but for us also, whom or to whom sh shall it be imputed? Sorry, I'm not the best at reading stuff on computers, so my apologies. Uh, yes, yeah, for, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised Jesus up from, or raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Huh, shall be imputed to you? And if you read the context of Romans 4, it's talking about righteousness. 
righteousness is imputed to you when you believe uh, that Jesus, or believe on him that raised Jesus from the dead. Verse 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Hmm. It's him. He, is, he justifies us. We don't justify ourselves like this lying heretic right here says. So again, try to refute that. It clearly says, uh, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. Righteousness is imputed unto us when we believe on Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Here's another, another one that, you know, I love to see this lying Satanist, this work salvation Catholic try to uh, refute. Verse, uh, verse 13, Christ hath redeemed us. Hmm, it's Christ that redeems us. We don't redeem ourselves. Uh, from the curse of the law, by being made, or by being made, sorry, being made a curse for, again, I'm not good at reading stuff on a computer. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. It's through Jesus Christ that we receive the promise of the Spirit, not by our own sinless perfection or holy, li holy living. I mean, just scripture after scripture debunks this lying, work salvation, self righteous Catholic. And that's what he is. He's a Catholic. I mean, what, I, you know, I've seen videos where he obviously speaks against Roman Catholicism. And, and yeah, sure, he may be anti Catholic, but his theology is Roman Catholic to the core. Because Catholics believe exactly what he does. Because Catholics, they believe they have to die in a state, a state of grace to be saved. So Catholics, if they're living in mortal sin, uh, they go to purgatory. They don't go straight to heaven, which is this guy. He doesn't believe in a state of grace. He just believes you have to die in a state of sinless perfection. Then you go to heaven. It's exactly, it's just something what Catholics believe, kind of like a modified thing, version of what Catholics believe. So, I uh, guess Catholics believe you, there, there can still be sin in your life. You just can't have any mortal sins. You only have venial sins. Uh, so, uh, on to the next video. Once saved, always saved. Calvinism refuted by Jesse Morrell. So, he says that one, once saved, always saved is Calvinism. Let's see, and, let's, and you're going to see he proves that he's self-righteous. He proves that he's working his way to heaven. Watch this. It's a way of escape. So we want to know what is your belief? Well, what is your legal up. standing yeah, after you committed the sin, after you became a Christian? Yeah, I believe if you are in deliberate sin, you're under God's wrath until you repent. So I'm not one saved, always saved. Hmm. I'm so he says, if you are in deliberate sin, you are under God's wrath until you repent. He proves that he's self-righteous. He proves that he is working his way to heaven because he, he just clearly says until you're under God's wrath until you repent. He proves that salvation, he, he, he just proves that he believes that salvation is not, not about what Christ did, it's about what you do. Hmm, interesting. Just about like what the Catholics believe too. And again, I call him a Catholic because he may, he may speak against Roman Catholicism, he may speak against you know, the satanic cult that is Roman Catholicism, but his theology lines up perfectly with Roman Catholics. I'm not any sort of greasy grace. I believe if you're in deliberate sin, like Peter was, you're on your way to hell until you repent. Again, until you repent. So it's not about what Christ did, it's, what, it's, it's you having to continually repent and continually living in holiness to be saved. Again, proving that he's, he's working his way to heaven. Um, let me show you some scripture on that. Ephesians 1.13, here's a good one that proves eternal security. Ephesians 1 13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Sorry, my apologies, I am sick. Uh, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed when you when you believe. Romans chapter 8, because uh, Jesse Morrell, according to him, uh, we're under God's wrath until we repent if we're in deliberate sin. Okay, Romans chapter 8, verse number 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, hmm, sin there, nakedness, or pearl, or sword? Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Uh, nay, verse 37, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hmm, or conquerors through Jesus Christ, not by our own self-righteousness. Verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, verse 39, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. You want to talk about some powerful verses right there? That's a really good one. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. But, according to this liar, uh, we can be separated from the love of God. He's a Satanist. He's trying to work his own way to heaven. He thinks he's on. He basically thinks you have to be on Christ's level. He 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 calls himself Saint Jesse. He's a Satanist. That's what he is. 
you know, he just, he's just like Lucifer, thinking that, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, he's exalting himself. Ephesians chapter 3, no, Ephesians, I'm sorry, Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Hmm. You're sealed. Interesting. Uh, here's another good one that makes a problem for this uh, lying Satanist. Or not, not Titus. Uh, I believe it's First uh, Timothy chapter 2. Oh, no, actually it is in Titus. Sorry, I, I, may, I got messed up there. Titus chapter 3, verse number 5. Uh, here it says right here, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Salvation is not about what we do, it's about what God did for us. It's about what Christ did for us on the cross. So again, just proving that he's self-righteous. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Hmm. See, right here, he can boast. Because he thinks he thinks he's working his own way to heaven. He thinks that, oh, I have to merit my own salvation. He can boast. He's proud. He brags about how, how much of a saint he is. He's a, he's a self-righteous Satanist. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You're a child, child of God by faith, not by what you do. So, don't be deceived by this lying Satanist here, Jesse Morrell. He's a hellbound, I mean, he's just the worst heretic I've probably ever seen. I, even back when I was kind of supporting his ministry, I began to see a lot of problems. Now, it's, now I just know, yeah, he's that guy is just as safe as the devil is. I mean, he's wicked. So don't be deceived by this lying Satanist. God bless you. Goodbye.